along with Mike Francesa, welcome to our CBS Sports continuing coverage of the road to the Final Four. And today we make our final two stops. Coming up in about 35 minutes, we'll wander way down yonder to New Orleans, where Clem Haskins' Golden Gophers will try to defuse Lethal Weapon 3, the explosive Georgia Tech offense. Then in about three hours from now, we'll take you out to Oakland, where the tournament's sentimental favorites, Loyola Marymount, will take on the lone remaining top seed, Nevada Las Vegas. Today's two winners will join Duke and Arkansas at the Final Four next weekend. Now, yesterday, with 20 seconds left, Texas had a chance to tie with a three. Travis Mays misfired and fouled out on the collision. The Cinderella Longhorns had suffered their third loss of the season to conference rival Nolan Richardson and Arkansas. The Razorbacks are going to the Final Four for the fourth time in school history. Meanwhile, back home in the hills of Arkansas, the fans went hog wild. Duke's chances were slim yesterday, trailing by a point in the closing seconds of overtime. You cannot blame the passer. All right, here is Leitner with the shot, and it scores! And to Quinn! It's been a familiar trip from the Meadowlands back down to Raleigh-Durham Airport. A scene that we've seen now four times in the last five years. The Blue Devils returning home, knowing they're headed to another Final Four. And for Coach Mike Krzyzewski, three straight years, not only the four out of five. You know, Mike, there's no question that Coach K is one of the real bright minds of college basketball. But this has to be one of his best jobs in, in his whole career, really. I, I think the way this tournament is shaped up, even though the East may have been the weakest of the brackets, Jim, just surviving and getting to the uh, Final Four is really accomplishment enough. You know, people are going to say, Duke, four times in five years, they have pressure to go and win. I don't see it that way. I think he's done a great job just getting there. They're not the Denver Broncos of college basketball. <laughs> okay. Duke's a three seed, which is uh, the same seed that Michigan was last year when it won the national championship. Right. Arkansas, the job by Nolan Richardson, a four seed coming out of the Midwest. I thought that Arkansas was a year away. I thought next year they'd be a team that would really challenge for the whole thing. Jim, what happened was Georgetown went down, Oklahoma went down. Good path for Arkansas. They're there. All right. Big year for the Southwest Conference. Very big year. And that's final. All right, the women's Final Four is now set. During the day yesterday, Virginia advanced on to Knoxville, and then last night... Minnesota head coach Clem Haskins learned the game of basketball well in his playing days. Now, he's the teacher, and his students, like senior forward Willie Burton, have done their homework, and the results are evident. Burton has been the big scorer for the first Minnesota team ever to reach a regional final. His dream is the Final Four. It's always been a dream of mine getting to the Final Four, watching it on TV and the celebration, and watching the teams continue on and drive to compete in our college basketball. And in the beginning of the tournament, we said this is it. And this is actually it. He's came from here on out to be our last. But we're striving for the Final Four. We're only one game away, and that's our goal. Georgia Tech head coach Bobby Cremins has gotten this far with some of the most talented players in the land. Senior guard Brian Oliver has enjoyed an outstanding career, as has junior forward Dennis Scott. But it took a freshman from New York named Kenny Anderson to tie this group together to bring Georgia Tech to within shooting range of the Final Four. He's just a freshman, but the Final Four has been his wish, too. When I was a little kid, I always dreamed about going to the Final Four, and now I sit here one game away from it, and it will mean the world to me uh, just to be a part of it. Today's winner moves on to Denver, and someone's dream will come true. Welcome to the Superdome in New Orleans for the Southeast Regional Championship matchup. Four fine teams arrived here on Friday. Two remain, and this afternoon's winner gets the tickets to Denver. It's the Golden Gophers of Minnesota and the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome.
welcome to New Orleans. I'm Greg Gumbel. We'll have to try hard to top what happened here on Friday night. It closed out the action in the two games in the semifinals. Kenny Anderson kept the regular overtime, or prior to the overtime, kept the regular action this way. There's a question as to whether or not that shout should have counted. It did. It tied the game, and in overtime, Georgia Tech eliminated Michigan State. I'm joined, as usual, by my partner, Quinn Buckner. A lot of people expected Georgia Tech to reach this stage, but not Minnesota, but you did. You said they'd be here. Well, I thought Minnesota could control the tempo. I thought they'd play hard and, and do just that. But what they are going to need today is to try to control the tempo because both clubs want to run, but with a player like Kendi Anderson on Georgia Tech, they got their hands full. Let's take a look at how Georgia Tech got here. Pretty rough road for them after East Tennessee State, a thriller against LSU, and then the overtime victory over Michigan State on Friday. It is the first time they have reached a regional final since they were eliminated by Georgetown in 1985. And in Georgia Tech, you will see three talented ball players today. Well, they got what they're calling the lethal weapon three. Dennis Scott, Ryan Oliver, and Kenny Anderson are three outstanding players. You can see there's numbers right there, but what I like about them is Kenny Anderson. He ties it all together for the team. He's the guy that pushes the ball up the court. He distributes it. He is the heart and soul of the team. Big 31-point effort on Friday night here and carrying them into overtime and then to victory. The Minnesota Golden Gophers, fourth place finish in the Big Ten and then an overtime victory over Texas El Paso. Beating Syracuse here, 82-75 Friday night. It's their first ever appearance in a regional final. They are led on the court by Willie Burton, their leading scorer, a 6'7 senior out of Detroit, Michigan. He's the guy that Clem Haskins says has to make us go on the scoring side. But there's a very talented and unknown backcourt here. Well, it really is. They have Kevin Lynch and Melvin Newberg. These two guys are the guards for the team. They're as good a tandem as anybody who plays in the country. They get out, they push the ball up the court, they can shoot jump shots. They play together well defensively. They'll, they'll steal the ball. They're really the, really the catalyst. I think Willie Burton has to score, but these guys have to make it happen defensively. Neither of these teams have been to the Final Four. One will when we wrap up the action today. We'll have the starting lineup for you when we come back to New Orleans in just a moment. Today's officials, Jerry Donaghy, Sam Croft, Dave Libby. It'll be Willie Burton jumping at center for the Golden Gophers and Malcolm Mackey for Georgia Tech. Neither of these teams has ever won a regional final. Well, right here is when you, you got the butterflies. Until that ball goes up, you don't know what quite what you feel. But you'll get an elbow or get down there and bump around, and then you realize you're in the game, and it's time to suit up and go. Georgia Tech with the basketball in white. Minnesota's coming out right at the top, playing tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Coffee on Scott will be a good matchup. Anderson back to Scott for a three. Rebound, Oliver, and Oliver fouled on his way up. Foul is on Kevin Lynch. Well, one of the ways I, I would suspect Georgia Tech is going to try to attack Minnesota is to try to get some offensive rebound baskets, some putback. Kevin Lynch has got a, a, a good, good lockup with Brian Oliver. Oliver struggled. Lynch, a smart player, able to play good defense on him. Correction, that foul is on Willie Burton. Brian Oliver did not have the kind of game of which he is capable two nights ago as he misses the first and Anderson then loses it out of bounds. Oliver scored just 11 points against Michigan State and that's far below par for a guy who comes in averaging over 21 a game. Georgia Tech, Tech testing the ball handling ability of Minnesota. Full court pressure right here. Down into the corner to Chicken Jansky and back out to Lynch and Burton. And now Melvin Newburn will trigger the offense. This is a matchup they need to take advantage of if they can. Big rejection by Mackey. Burton follows as it's stripped away by Dennis Scott. Here come the Yellow Jackets. Anderson. And Burton with the rebound. The matchup I'm talking about is Kenny Anderson is only about 6'2", and he's trying to guard Kevin Lynch, who's about 6'4", and is accustomed to playing inside. So it's a chance to get a bucket, but also Anderson a foul. Chicken Jansky, the short pop and the foul, and he'll go to the line to try for a three-point play. Mackey's 
first personal. Jim Shikinjanski, a 6'9", senior out of Rockton, Illinois. He didn't play that well the other night, Greg, and, and I, I know when you talk to Clem, he wants Shikinjanski to be a force inside. Minnesota with the two-point lead. And here's Oliver into the lane. And picked off by Richard Coffey, who had a great night against Syracuse the other night. All the way across court, Newburn for three. Coffey there for the rebound. He misses it. Newburn up high, loose ball. And save before it went out of bounds. Newburn will put it up again. Well, you can't give anybody that many opportunities. Georgia Tech just standing around. Minnesota coming up with the ball. Couldn't get it down. Gophers. McNeil putting the ball on the floor inside and now goes back on top. Little person was the quick starter for Georgia Tech Friday night. This is a little, little jitters right here. Guys not holding on to the ball. When you see them doing that missing wide open shots they normally make. Just a little early jitters. Oliver's drive. Looks like it went off the side of the backboard. And the officials say out of bounds to Georgia Tech. <laughs> I was hoping somebody blocked it because, boy, he threw that one to the side of the backboard. Good pass underneath, and Scott lost the handle. Melvin Newberg has got the task of trying to guard Kenny Anderson. That's a good choice there. Newberg, good athlete, maybe able to slow him up, slow Anderson up. What a move inside by Dennis Scott for the first field goal of the afternoon for Georgia Tech. And we're tied at three. Look to Willie Burton down low, working on Scott. And again, Scott strips the ball, but the follow-up is good, and we've got a player down. And that looks like Malcolm Mackey, who may have caught a hand in the face. Well, it very well could have been that. When uh, Burton is taking the ball to the basket, first of all, they're allowing him to get it. You see it right there in the middle of your screen. Dennis Scott's allowing him to get it. And yeah, what happened was Willie Burton, in his effort to try to get the ball back as Dennis Scott hit it, hit Malcolm Mackey in the face. But he seems to be all right. Meanwhile, Willie Burton is holding his hand down court. And while Mackey is treated on the sideline, number five, Carl Brown, has come into the lineup for Georgia Tech. Carl Brown, a good defensive player. Scott. Nice move to the baseline by Dennis Scott. Dennis Scott, that's the way he got off against uh, Friday night against Michigan State. You can't play behind him because he's 6'8", and he's very tough down on the block. You need to front him. Burton open for the three-pointer. Around and out, tap no good. And Brown has it up the sideline. And after a scramble, Scott has the ball. Anderson around Lynch. What a move by Kenny Anderson. That's where he can get you. If the game gets wide open, Kenny Anderson can really beat you because he's got so much ball handling skills and an ability to get any way he wants on the court. Tech with a 7-5 lead. Brown really harassing Newberg. And the foul is called on Carl Brown. And Brown insisting that Newberg wrapped his arm around him to get past that. <laughs> you can see that in intensity in Carl Brown's face. And I'm not so sure that he, he's not right, Carl Brown, about the rap. But I think there's definitely a push by Carl Brown before that rap. That's why they put Brown in the game, be harassing on the defensive end. Number 40, Walter Bond is in the lineup for Minnesota now. Added out of bounds, and the Gophers will inbound again. Now, Minnesota will play seven, eight people off the, off the bench where Georgia Tech really won't. And what, you, what I expect is you run as many people as you can at Kenny Anderson to try to tire him out. Chicken Jansky off the pick. And here comes Scott with Oliver. Scott's going to keep it. And he travels. 59 to play, first half, Georgia Tech, two-point lead. We'll be back to New Orleans after this. Great games took place yesterday in New Jersey and in Dallas, and Blue Devils and Razorbacks are on their way to Denver. 
Duke and Arkansas will meet in one game in Denver, and the winner of this one will play the winner of the one to follow today. University of Nevada, Las Vegas against Loyola Marymount. Get the track shoes out for that one. Yeah, you see that you need the track shoes out. Loyola Marymount is in better shape than they were the first time that the Las Vegas played them. Bond to Shukin Jansky. Around and out, tap up no good, another one no good, and Burton helps crash the board. That is just going to bury Georgia's uh, tech if they don't get on the defensive board. Oliver back in a hurry and scores. Big power move. Well, that, see, that's what they want to do. They, they'll push it up, but they can't afford to give up the board. Oh, back comes Newburn, and they lost it out of bounds. No, saved by Walter Bond. Lynch, good bounce pass. Burton on the pass from Lynch. Six points for Burton, and we have a tie at nine. Kenny Anderson. Get any way he wants on the court, Greg. I'm telling you, as good as anybody I've ever seen at the point guard spot, getting to where he needs to get. After a cold start, the Yellow Jackets have now hit their last five shots, and they have a two-point lead. Georgia Tech has come out now and gone into their 2-1-2-2-3 their two, 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 zone. Chicken Jansky finds the hole in the middle and it falls. And the last game. place you should get it is in the middle with a 2-1-2. Scott, three-pointer. And Walter Bond has the rebound for Minnesota. Von Haskins says the Gophers have to own the boards today. And whether they're really getting it is on the offensive board. And I'm not sure that's something that he can expect. McNeil made Chicken Jansky adjust his shot. Here comes Anderson. Got to get back. Oh. A freshman with the poise of a senior. You know, you and I were talking about this. Kenny Anderson reminds me of, of Nate Tiny Archibald, who played at uh, Texas El Paso at UTEP. It was Texas Western then. Quick, gets where he wants to go, can score as well as pass. Those aren't bad credentials to have. Kevin Lynch, three-pointer. And back come the Jackets in a hurry. Oliver around and out. That last time out, it would appear both teams have been instructed to push it and push it hard. Yeah, it, it was. Georgia Tech really wants to push it up. And Minnesota's taking advantage of the fact that Georgia Tech will run on the offensive end and have struggled getting back defensively. Chicken Jansky with another bucket. And Anderson inside, tied up by Chicken Jansky. And possession arrow favoring Minnesota. Into the line.